So I was in a very successful career and making lots of money and happy. I should have been winning awards. But in the back of my head was, how do I put my skills as a photographer and a storyteller mm. to, good to help females in Africa? Cheese, take a picture, strike a pose, make a singing, take a picture. Wow, today, my visa fellows, we are joined in the studio by Amina Mohammed. She's going to introduce herself to you. My family and I are from Uganda. We came to Canada 50 years ago as refugees. It was 50 years ago last year when Idi Amin kicked all of the Indians out of the country. And I am the founder and executive director of a charity called Cameras for Girls. Yeah. Wow, I'm interested. <laughs> Refugees from Uganda. Please tell me more. in Africa using the power of photography. Woo! Say cheese, take a picture, strike a pose, make a singing, take a picture. Wow, today, my visa fellows, we are joined in the studio by Amina Mohammed. She's going to introduce herself to you. But in this episode, we are highlighting, hmm, you don't want to know the topic, humanitarianism through lenses. We want to show you inspirational leaders in communities we want to bring your motivational words to you oh my god amina is doing an immense work in her communities and i'm sure you want to hear the story guys welcome to an inspiring episode on the pizza platform and this is your girl betty osaibonsu here where passion values and environment comes to life today we are with amina Please, Amina, do you mind sharing with us? Like I said, the broad smile on your face. Your <laughs> name, where you're from, and what you do. Oh, my God. Are you energetic and powerful? <laughs> you are amazing, Betty. Uh, thank you so much for inviting me onto your platform. My name is Amina Mohammed. I am Canadian. Uh, however, my family and I are from Uganda. We came to Canada 50 years ago as refugees. Ooh. And I am the founder and executive director of a charity called Cameras for Girls. Uh, wow. And yeah. Wow, I'm interested. <laughs> Refugees from Uganda. Please tell me more. Like, can so, you share a little story about yourself? Yeah. So this, uh, this will date me because I'm much older than you. I was three <laughs> when I came. So you can do the math. It was 50 years ago last year. And um, when Idi Amin kicked all of the Indians out of the country with 90 days notice. So like I said, I was three years old. We came to Canada and we settled in Canada that we thought was, you know, all I knew was, oh, my God, we left Uganda. This was our home. But now this is our new home. But inside of me was always that desire to know Uganda, to learn about our roots mm. and to go back and see it. And I finally wow. got that chance in 2007. Wow, wow. No, but I just want to ask further question. How was it leaving Uganda as a child? How old were you? Well, I was three, so I wouldn't remember. But for mm -hmm. my parents mm -hmm. uh, who were born there, my, you know, very traumatic, right? Like, like they've mm -hmm. never been back and they never will go back because they want to remember Uganda as it was and not what it had become. Which oh my God. I look forward to asking you a further question on what Uganda was and how it's become, yeah. how it's, it is now. But just going forward, tell us about Camera for Girls. What did you identify? What was the problem? Mm -hmm. and what made you come up with this name, Camera for Girls? Yeah. So when I went back in 2007, I was expecting to see the same world we left behind, which was, you know, a beautiful country, which it still is of, you know, people having education mm -hmm. and, excuse me, very re wealthy country. After all, it's known as the Pearl of Africa. But what I saw was immense poverty. But even mm -hmm. worse than that was the plight of females, women and girls 
you know, I was meeting women as young as, or girls as young as 14, mm. getting married, being married off to older men. And by the time they're in their mid twenties, having five to six children, not being educated because they were girls. It was not a right, still not a right. Right. And it angered me because I had grown up in Canada with all the opportunities that I wanted to have. Yeah. But here are girls and women who are not getting that simply because they're born female. And I was like, what is this? And what so it? it it took me 10 years to come up with the idea. Um, yeah. So I was in a very successful career and making lots of money and happy. I should have been winning awards. But in the back of my head was how do I put my skills as a photographer and a storyteller mm. to, good, to help females in Africa? Wow. And actually, my brother, I call him my brother, my very good friend who's a journalist who said to me, you need to go back and teach girls who are endeavoring to be journalists. And mm. bingo, that's how we came up with it. Wow. It's, that's inspirational to hear. I'm just lost of words. Viewers, you had have very, very clearly coming from that background, being a refugee, but then are you know, interested more on who she identifies as an Indian, hmm. a Ugandan, or hmm. a Canadian? It, it would just be good to hear it's that. Very difficult, right? It's, it's a mix. But if people, like I was born in England, to be honest with you, um, not born in Uganda, but if you ask me where I'm from, mm -hmm. first thing, I'll, I'm from Uganda. I'm Ugandan. Because I just identify with the people, I identify, it just feels where I'm supposed to be, where, where I was meant to be. Okay. I've decided to dedicate my life to making, you know, the lives of females across Africa, not just Uganda, across Africa, better. Mm. Uh, and give them skills-based training, not just in photography, but also in business skills to empower them to use their voice to reach their goals of getting paid work in male-dominated spaces. I had my editing session at Youth Arts Movement. I interacted with Photoshop and Premiere Pro. Premiere Pro has really enabled me improve on my video editing skills. I have been able to look at the tools like the pen tool, the razor, and this has really improved my skills. We also looked at the animations and all that. Right, because that wow. at the end of the day is a real is a real factor of living life in, in uh, Africa as a female. You're always mm -hmm. against that male domination or being told that your place is in the home as a daughter, a sister, a you know, a wife or a mother but not out there in the working world. And even growing up in Canada, we hear those messages, but yeah. most many of us can break through that glass ceiling, but it's not possible for many in Africa. Wow, thank you so much for sharing that. So I'd like to ask, are there any disappointments you encountered along the way having this particular initiative and the impact you're making in the community? Absolutely. I mean, nothing that you build, even you doing, you know, be inspired, <laughs> would not say that you have not had any struggles, right? So the struggles would be getting into the country in the first place or get or making collaborations with universities or proper partners, NGOs, what have you, support networks, building a support team. Funding is always and has been and will be an issue because we're registered in Canada and we are seeking funding elsewhere. So there's always those challenges, no matter what you do. But I think it's how you head them off, how you deal with it, that becomes mm -hmm. your uh, your your success factor at the end of the day, right? Mm -hmm. So I don't let anything stop me. Okay. I don't let anybody say to me no, because a no just means that somebody else is going to open up a door with a yes. That's and it's true. just constantly going out there and finding that. Right. My okay. husband is my biggest supporter, but he keeps, keeps telling me, you got to go find a job. And I'm like, I need a job. It just doesn't pay. Right. So, um, those are those are real life things. Right. Mm -hmm. Like I have a vision. I have a goal. But mm -hmm. then there's also survival uh, for okay. my me and my family. Right. So okay. I, I can't live in the dream dream world always. Mm -hmm. Wow. 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 So right now, 
with the work you are doing with the ladies, what are some ongoing activities that you are currently embarking on? Yeah. So we have a four phase program. The first phase is our workshop, which takes place four days in Kampala or wherever we train. And the second, third, and fourth are all online. It includes uh, training the girls in ongoing photography skills. So they go from basic to advanced. Mm. Then business skills like, you know, how to, you know, build a resume, a LinkedIn profile so they can see, be seen in the world, teaching them editing and digital marketing skills so they know how to put themselves out there. And then mentoring. Mentoring is crucial. And then listening to what the girls need, not telling them what we have to offer. Take it or leave it, but more about, hey, is our programming working for you? And if not, building it so it does, right? Mm -hmm. So there's so many moving pieces at all times. And now I'm building phase five, which has come out from those discussions with the girls, listening to their struggles of, I can't get a job because I'm told that I need to pay for it with money or sex. Or if I got a job, I'm still being systemic, systemically harassed, or I'm being held back because a guy got paid more. Issues abound and will always abound. So what I'm building is a peer-to-peer -peer support network led mm -hmm. by two girls for all the girls so that they can share, empower, and build each other up. Wow, I think that is, that's that's so great. I can just imagine as a girl myself having to be in that society where I have to either pay with sex or I pay with money, money just to get yeah. access to right? Yeah, and I'm empowering them to mm -hmm. learn how to say no and walk mm -hmm. away. Because mm -hmm. like I said earlier, a door might close, but another... Yeah might also open just need that network and those skills and that feeling of empowerment to get mm -hmm. you to the right so, so how help. many girls how many girls do you work with now and do you provide them cameras how many have you done yeah, yeah. so you at a time yeah so we are going we're heading into our fourth workshop in june okay. with another 15 girls but to date 47 girls have been taught in uganda 47 mm -hmm. cameras have been given out wow. and yeah, 32 of them now have full-time jobs. But then there's the online platform that I've built where I can reach uh, girls across Africa, girls and women across mm -hmm. Africa, from different organizations. I've even got girls in refugee camps that are learning from us wow. because this online training platform and all they need is a phone or their own camera. That's so there's true. two ways to go about it. But it just opens up that network of, you know, being heard, mm -hmm. being listened to, being, you know, told that you're okay, you're in the right space, and we are here to support your goals, right? Okay. But it takes them working at it, too. We can't do, it's it's not give them a fish, it's teach them how to fish oh. so that they can get further. That's true. Know? That's true. Now, talking about equipment and funding. Currently, how are you able to generate your funds for mm. the equipment to distribute to these ladies? Yes. So we use the we use one camera, which is called the Canon G1X. Okay. Because imagine I can't train on different cameras. And so what I do to the community is I go out there and I either ask for actual funds so we can purchase or do our programming. But then a lot of people from the US and Canada around the world are sending me their used or their new camera equipment. Mm. Then I sell that to purchase what we need. So okay. it's a constant, uh, it's amazing. Like on the weekend, long weekend, I drove two hours to pick up a trunk load of camera equipment from a person. Oh my God. Not all of it is working order, that's fine because we can use it for parts. But people hear about us and they might not have the money to donate, but they might have some equipment to donate, right? So I'm constantly mm -hmm. out there saying, hey, instead of putting it into the landfill, even if it's a company with old computers or old phones or what have you, give it to us. We'll gratefully mm -hmm. take it, give it to a girl who can use it. Wow, viewers. I mean, it's not only inspiring communities, young females, but she's also doing recycling. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hello. Nice resources. Come on. That, that, that's great to hear. <laughs> so with respect to your work, do you have government officials in Uganda recognizing what you do? And do no. you support other no. corporations? Wow. I, stay under, I stay under the radar. 
And the reason right now is, and it might be dangerous to say this, is we're not registered there. We don't want to register yet yeah. because it becomes a um, a portal for a government handout, right? Mm -hmm. We'll be paying a lot of bribes and it happens and I'm not afraid to talk about it. And we don't have a lot of funding. So if to pay bribes, like I'm going to be out of out of work pretty soon, those funds will not go to where they're needed. So I'm looking for partners in Africa to say, hey, Amina, we'll partner with you so that we can access funding on your behalf mm. and put you the line item of the, of the budget. That mm. would be a win-win. Okay. Um, barring that, we're going to have to look at what do we do in the future. Wow. Okay, let me say I respect your stand on not taking it deep or diving deep into the conversation of government and <laughs> funding, etc. It can get really dangerous, you know what I mean? Yeah. I can imagine in Uganda. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, so from your experiences, you are doing an immense work in your community. How do you think individuals can tap into your experience and cause change in their community? I think there's a couple of ways to do this, you know, like if you have a skill set, say you are a photographer or say you are a lawyer, say whatever you do, right? We all have different skills. Look around your community to see who is being impacted the most or disenfranchised the most is a better way to put it or is marginalized and see if your skill set can be for like pay it forward to help those people lift up. Hmm. We can all do it, right? Whether it's, like collecting used clothing for women who are looking to get back into the workforce, but they're living in a shelter and they don't have funds to buy those clothing. Or you're a hairdresser. You can find a way to pay it forward by cutting hair of the homeless. There are so many ways. I think we just have to open up our way of yeah. living in this world and paying mm -hmm. it forward. Okay. But in terms of skill accessibility, don't you think there's mm -hmm. a huge gap between African countries and mm -hmm. that foreign Absolutely. Countries, Absolutely. Which experience. I'm sure you have observed something Absolutely. like that. And, you know, I'd like to do, I'd like to say one thing to the NGOs that venture into Africa. It's, you need to, you, number one, you need to put the money that you're raising towards the people. It is not there for administration, right? Yeah. Administration is it should be five to ten percent of what you're raising. It should not yeah. be the massive part. And this is this is thing that really upsets me when I look at NGOs. And I won't paint a brush against all of them because there's so many that are doing good work, but on the other side of the coin, they're not. Mm. So this wake up to you. Do the work. Put the money where it's supposed to be. Yeah. Put the money to supporting those people, giving them the skills so that they can lift themselves up. My goal. Betty, is to be one day out of business. And I say that so that I know that all of our work that we've done has risen the lives of women and, and girls in Africa. Wow. If we can make that much of an impact where they are getting work, they're getting paid, they're getting out of poverty, they're supporting themselves and their families, there won't be any need for cameras for girls. Okay. But sadly, the dream world, right? So all I'm saying is that we all have the power collectively okay. to raise someone else up. Mm. Our skills and pay it forward on a small level or a big level. Okay. Mentioning Africa and mentioning skills and mentioning gap. I mean, now let me ask you this question. What mm. kind of Africa would you like to see in the coming 10 years, 20 years? Well, you're seeing it on the startup community. We're okay. seeing immense growth in the startup community, right? Mm -hmm. Outside of that startup community, I'd like to see it against all communities, okay. right? So there's empowerment, not just for, excuse me, not just for women, mm -hmm. empowerment for everybody, gender equity or equality. Equality means for both men and women. Equity means for women, right? So you can take it however you want it. I would like to see that the wealth is divide, is not divided and that it's the have and have nots. I would like to see a world where we're all equal. Wow. I don't know if I'll see that in our life. I'd love to see that, right? Wow. I would also love to see that. Now, in terms of assistance, what would you want to get? Like, would you want individuals to reach out to you 
what is that call out from this interview? Absolutely. What are you, for? you know, if you are watching this and you are a business owner or mm-hmm. you work for a corporation and you would love to partner with us, either for funding or resources, we would love to talk to you. If you are an organization that is doing your own work to empower females and they want a way to tell their story, we would love to collaborate with you and open up our portal to your girls and women and and help them learn. If you are a foundation and you have a grant that you feel that we would be a fit for, please reach out. You can find us on social media or at amina at cameras Amina at cameras for girls. Oh, okay. Do you have any final words to the viewers? Just any final words. To Betty, your team, and to our viewer, your viewers, I really just want to take this opportunity to thank you for, Mm -hmm. you know, allowing us a platform to speak. And I really want to speak to the girls out there and women out there that you're not alone. There are people who believe in you, who want to see you move forward in your life, who want to upskill you. And if you are a girl who is venturing into journalism, communications or photography, reach out. We want to talk to you. Wow. You had her clearly reach out they want to talk to you empowering females in africa using the power of photography you just heard from amina mohammed say cheese take a picture (laughs) beautiful i hope you are inspired because we are stay tuned and don't forget to subscribe to all our social media channels is displayed on the screen and don't forget to press that notification bell to receive updates when they come by